everybody, welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle. We are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And this is a podcast all about knitting and other various forms of craftiness. And you can find all of our show notes below this um, video, or if you want the clickable links, you can go to meanwhileatthecastle.com to find all of the show notes there as well. We also have a Ravelry group at just Meanwhile at the Castle group in the Ravelry groups tab. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? No, I'm I just looking. I was like, like fix the hair, fix it. Okay. I know okay. I forgot okay. to put on any earrings or rings, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, we're coming from you, coming to you from Salt Lake City. It is March 29th, and it has been an entire month since we podcast last. So, podcasted There's... last. I don't know how we you need conjugate burn. that. <laughs> since we <laughs> since we saw you last time, or you saw us. Anyway, kind of crazy. So, a little bit about our episode today. We're going to be talking about a knit along, doing a giveaway that we announced last time. Then we're going to be doing finished objects, works in progress, and then announcing another giveaway at the end, plus talking about a super exciting project that you can join in on that Deborah will tell us about at the end. So <laughs> let's talk about our knit along. All right, we that. had our. Uh, Learn to Knit Socks live video series that we finished a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. all of the videos for that. That was a steep learning curve for us. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Doing live YouTube videos where you need to see the comments, but you can't see your screen. <laughs> That was nuts. That was crazy. Our fun. first video was especially crazy. And you were so good at it. Like, your <laughs> tutorial... Don't, don't watch mine. Let's just put it there. <laughs> no, 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 don't say that. Seriously, no. no. There's, Deborah's are really good. But we, we figured it out. We finally yes. figured it out. So thank you to those who were very gracious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as you joined us each week. We had fun with all of the sweet people that were participating yes. with us. And that was fun. That was the best part. Yeah, and then we've had a lot of people that have joined in um, yeah. after our live video series. Uh, but we have a hashtag where you can share your works in progress or your finished objects and just what what you've been learning about knitting socks with the hashtag MyFirstSocksCal. And we have a Ravelry thread, a thread in our Ravelry group. Mm -hmm. um, where you can go and put in your finished objects to enter uh, the giveaway. This knit along is coming to a close. We are going to say, finish your taxes and finish your socks. <laughs> By April so, 15th, yes. So, <laughs> I um, like it. So make sure, wait, I thought it was 16th. Oh, you're right, it is because the 15th Tax is day. a Sunday. Tax day is 16th. This so, year. Yeah. Yeah. So, that is when we are going to be closing <laughs> the thread. And then we will have a giveaway for that on our next episode. Mm-hmm. Depends on when we podcast. We'll see. I'm just, I'm just saying it was a month since our last one, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be a little bit flexible here, so. <laughs> yep. So it's been fun. Thank you to those who have participated. And I'm really excited to see that some of you have finished one and have started another pair. Um, right, that's been really cool. have knit quite a bit and then figured out, okay, now I understand it, and ripped it out and started again <laughs> so you could do it again. You know, that's dedication, so well done. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Yeah. That's really awesome. All right, we also have a giveaway. We announced last time on our last episode that we were going to be doing a giveaway for the gorgeous beads from Project Lydia <clears throat> that we picked up at Stitches West. This is a nonprofit organization yes. that helps women in um, Africa. I'm trying to find their... I think they were in Uganda. Name. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I right? Am I right? Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember where specifically, but I think... I'm trying to find... I have a lot of information. Yes, Eastern mm -hmm. Uganda. Mm -hmm. And so the um, they assist widows and abandoned wives in helping to support their families and take care of themselves. Um, 
In fact, I'll just read this to you really quick. This, um, they develop marketable working skills, provide women with a support system in a very male-oriented culture, and provide income opportunities for women and their families. Um, this is not a sweatshop. Everything is very ethical and all about supporting the women. And, um, and it's really well made. Very, very well quality. made and very well organized, the organization. Yes. So we are so excited to do anything we can to support Project Lydia. Um, you can use them as a fundraiser too. So if you ever need a school fundraiser or anything like that in your in your community, please look up Project Lydia. It would be great for the kids and great for this group of women. So these are the gorgeous beads. We have a bracelet and a necklace, and they are you you. This won't do them justice. You no, have to no. see them. They are so beautiful. I bought six necklaces. I wear them all the time, and I love them. And they're just so beautiful. So this beautiful set, as well as the gorgeous yarn bowl from the Pottery Smiths. Um, this is a beautiful minty turquoise blue. They go together. Yeah, coordinating <laughs> set here. The Pottery Smiths are an amazing company located here in Utah, um, a small business, and they make the most beautiful, beautiful pottery. And um, they have donated this gorgeous yarn bowl. I think this yarn bowl that we are giving away, I think that it's a little bit unique. I like the design that they mm -hmm. have. It's got kind of floral. It's just lovely. Of, it's really pretty. So Very we have a picture lovely. that I have put yeah. up so you can see what that looks like. Because we don't have it physically because they're going to ship it directly to yes, the winner. Yes, absolutely. Because that's really nice for us. And the thing about the Pottery Smiths is I desperately want one of their bread bakers. I don't know if you've looked at them, Ooh. but they make these amazing, you know, for that, like, the really gorgeous like overnight sourdough. Mm -hmm. Oh my word, they're bread bakers. They are stunning. I need they're to check stunning. that out. Stunning. Because I make that, I do make the yeah. sourdough bread a lot because that's right. a bread I can eat. Mm -hmm. So that makes me happy. Right, you'll have to check them out. And yeah. they're really, I mean, they're just, oh, they're just beautiful. I can't say enough. So anyway, that is all the prize. And so an awesome prize package. And we have a winner. Our winner that was in the, the giveaway thread on our Ravelry page is Catherine. She is G um, Drew Bean on Ravelry. And she's in Massachusetts. And the question that we asked was, what was something that was part of your, what did we say? Bucket was your, list. your knitting bucket list. Just bucket list in general. Oh, there you go. But, yeah. It really, however you want to interpret it. <laughs> and she said that one of the things from her bucket list is to join a local knitting, crocheting group and meet people in person. And that's an awesome thing to do. Yep. Get out there and find people. It's great. So, Catherine, if you will please be in touch with us and let you let us know your address. How does she, mm -hmm. how should she contact you? Emily? You can contact me through Ravelry would probably be best. And, um... I'm Salt City Knits on Ravelry. And then we will ship out these beads and get that information to the Pottery Smiths for them to send you your gorgeous yarn bowl. So, congratulations. Okay. So, there's a fun giveaway that's happening. Yes. We have All actually right. quite a queue of giveaways coming up here yes. in the next. We've been trying to schedule episode, out how we're, I know. Going to, <laughs> how we're going to work them all. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> so keep watching for that. All right, it has been a month. Yes. It's been a month. It's <laughs> been an interesting month, I think, yeah. for us. What has been happening in your life, Emily? Well, things have been great. Just really crazy, but all good things happening at our house. I know you guys have had some more struggles. Um, but we've, um, you know, Deborah and I went to Stitches West a little mm -hmm. bit before our last podcast. But my family also went to Southern Utah on a really short little vacation in March. And it was just fabulous the pictures looked really we nice and so, warm <laughs> it wasn't really it honestly it looks warmer than it actually was <laughs> because of all the red rock, rock. <laughs> and so it looks like heat must be radiating off those rocks it, it usually really wasn't. does in the summer right yeah it gets pretty hot down there. I mean really hot down there mm -hmm. um but it was about 55 degrees most uh, for the highs most of the time but it was mm -hmm. beautifully sunny yes. and we just mm -hmm. had the best time we did some hiking which you know I went hiking, so I just want you to say the hikes were hikes, but we got to see some beautiful um, areas that I was stunned at the fact that there's so much that it, the bang for your buck for that hike, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Some of the hikes we did, they were not hard, but when you arrived at like the end of the trail, you got, and even during the hike, 
you were in this area where it felt like it should be the most inaccessible, difficult to play, mm -hmm. you know, get to only a few people ever make it there kind of places. I anyway. Utah is stunning. It's we said it before. Yeah. Let's say it again because it is stunning. There are so many yeah. different um what is the word I'm trying to think of? That it looks different. We have we live in a yeah. desert, but every area that you go to looks completely different mm -hmm. from the next, you know, from two hours away. I it's have just this. beautiful. That's okay. It's We're, just having bark. Hair. We're having hair. We're having hair. My hair does that too. Every what time I clip it? it back with the curl, because the curls lay just right here, but then you clip it back and it wants to flip up. <laughs> okay. It was you one of lovely. those days. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool because like in Southern Utah, it's one of the places that people will use for movie sets and all the time, oh, yeah. especially if you're doing like alien territory, you like feel like you're on another planet sometimes. But it's so cool because up here it was snowing and freezing. Mm -hmm. We drove for four hours, still in the same state. And even though it was still, you know, cool, it's spring, my kids were swimming, there's palm trees. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just so there's such a a variation in what you yeah. find. We've got anyway. A lot it's of beautiful. national parks here as well. Yeah. So tons so it was really lovely we did that and then i've just been dying yarn like crazy um since our last, last podcast um i am now being stocked at two yarn stores so that's super exciting i meant maybe maybe that happened beforehand be knit and pretty before the last podcast i don't remember yes yes it was it had okay so um yes knit 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 pretty at, um, in West Jordan, Utah, is stocking Yarnberry yarns, and now also the Knitting Post, which is in St. George, Utah. Um, I, I'm actually getting ready to ship her, so she will be stocking as well. So that's really exciting, and just working hard and doing heroic youth, and all kinds of crazy stuff. That's been us. Okay. Busy, busy. Yeah. <laughs> so, how about you? Yeah, we've had. Um interesting we we had the flu and several other illnesses for about three weeks and the first week luckily I didn't have that well pretty much most most of my family was sick so I could take care of them so that was a great blessing and then I got sick for two weeks and it was really 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 rough but at the same time I realized it has probably been two years since I've really been sick like I'll get a cold or something you know but since I've really been down in bed. That's a and great so, blessing though to have yes, a break. <laughs> yes. So I remembered that the whole time that <laughs> I've had a really nice break in illness. So that was really a, a blessing to have, have that much of a stretch. At the same time though, I feel like along with this illness, a lot of things, a lot of things have happened in our family. And I feel like it's really been just, if I look now looking back on the last month it's really just been a major shift in our family mm -hmm. and just I, I don't know how to say it other than just there's been a big shift that has happened <laughs> and I would say that the biggest thing the biggest thing that has come out of this <laughs> last month and the craziness and part of the sickness is that if you have followed over the last year and a half my oldest daughter's um, struggles with color blindness. Last year in June or the, the end of May, she fell, she passed out, fell, hit her head, got a concussion, and woke up and could see blue. <laughs> I talked about crazy. that in another podcast previously, but it was really a miracle. Um, during this illness, we went and had some some kind of brain work done by um, one of the therapists that we go and see and we did that a couple of times and after that she can see all of her colors I didn't know she could see all of them all of her. she is not colorblind anymore okay nobody unless you are colorblind or knows somebody live with somebody who is, that is can understand the magnitude of this miracle <laughs> It is miraculous, miraculous, absolutely miraculous. So I was too sick because I was really in bed when this was happening and she was changing for me to really fully cheer and appreciate it. And then afterwards, it's just 
mind-boggling. Now I'm gonna tell you she doesn't really care for pineapple anymore because it's now yellow and it's too glaring for her. <laughs> she doesn't want to eat it. But people's skin and grapes now look purple instead of gray. <laughs> People's like, skin looks like purple. a lot of people have a purple undertone, and if we get hot, uh -huh. we say we get really red. We don't. That's we true. turn purple, yeah. but to Claire, we turn gray, and we people look like zombies, like like you're oh, that's dying. Creepy. And she says, "Yeah, people look really weird to me now. Like I think zombie skin looks weird." But <laughs> anyways, that is the biggest uh, shift in our family, and I'm really excited about wow. it. Wow. Um, and during that time, I've also been wanting to just kind of reevaluate things. I'm always doing that, but I have decided, as of yesterday, I actually have closed my shop for the time being. I don't know how long um, and what I will do when I reopen. I know I will, because I always do, because I like mm -hmm. to make things and I like to share those things. But um, as of right now, I am not making project bags and I just closed it down for now. Take a break. Yep. That's a good break is so so important. We have that. We've we've been doing a lot of a lot of things. I've been working on our motor home, um, and that is getting really close to being ready to use. So I'm going to put some before and after pictures at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing kind of what we started with and where we are right this moment in our project. That's super fun. I know we have crazy, somebody was asking me and I realized I never updated because um, one podcast a few episodes ago, I showed up here after finding water leaking through the ceiling in my yes. studio and I never said what happened with that. Luckily, it was not as catastrophic as we you thought did. it was. I did say. Uh -huh. I remember we had this conversation. I know. I thought, it's it, been it was too a, long. I thought it was a private conversation. But why don't you go ahead for those who missed that. I can't even remember. Anyway, very briefly, it wasn't as catastrophic as we thought it was going to be. Um, there was water leaking around a pipe from a drain. So it wasn't actually like a split pipe or anything like that. And, um, so that water that was, we realized the drain needed to be replaced. Um, but it wasn't that it had built up over a long time. Does that make sense? So it wasn't a long-term thing. It was kind of one big thing. So we did have to cut out a big portion, not a big portion, but a portion of the ceiling, um, in my in my studio and let everything kind of air out and dry out and um, pull, you know, anyway, we had to do a bunch of stuff. And right now there's just like a piece of plywood closing that up. We'll get to it eventually, but you know, life is so insane and I am too busy using the studio right now mm -hmm. to be Shut able it down to have construction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think it was actually that somebody asked us when we were at Stitches. Anna or somebody mm -hmm. asked us. And so that's when we talked about it. But anyway. So that's relieving. Yes. Not to have to deal with that. <laughs> but all I have to say is right now it is the happiest. This is my happiest time of the year. Well, I don't know. One of the happiest times anyway. Because spring is really coming. I was looking at the weather forecast. And... Today is still a little cool, but it's supposed to warm up like 10 degrees by tomorrow and then a few more degrees after that. Mm -hmm. So um, the weekend, we're supposed to be about 70 degrees here, which I think is about 20 or 21 Celsius. Um, just, just Very nice it's for Easter. It's beautiful, gorgeous. Especially since yeah. it's been snowing and I thought, are we going to yeah. have a snowy Easter? That's not There fun. is no snow and barely any rain in the forecast mm -hmm. for the next two weeks. Now that can always change <laughs> yeah. for us here. Yeah. For where we are, but it's a beautiful thing. The yeah. girls are outside. I'm looking out the window and the girls are outside her youngest yeah. and my youngest roller skating. That is a happy, happy <laughs> day when they can play outside. <laughs> that Thank is, you. Yes. <laughs> they, it's because they are happier. So we are happier. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good things. All right. Hey. Okay. Well, let's start in on some knitting and finished objects. And Emily has the most, so we're going to have her start things off here. I thought, oh, I was going to say, I thought I had five. Yep, there it is. I don't remember what order I finished these I in, don't so think it matters. I'm just going to say them. I'm going to start with this one, because I think I showed this in progress last yeah, time. Let's do this one last. And I'll, yep. Because uh, I'll do this one. Okay. So, um, I finished this teeny little baby cardigan. It's the cutest, most adorable thing ever. It doesn't have, it's finished except for buttons, which is how everything I finish is. 
Look at that. It's so tiny and cute. It's itty bitty. I love this. This is the Alpha B Basic Baby Cardigan by Knit Pearl. And it's a seamed cardigan. And I just absolutely enjoyed making this, all of it. Even the seaming, the whole process was so delightful. Because you're knitting these little teeny tiny pieces and then you bind them off. And then you need another little teeny tiny piece and then you bind it off. You know what I mean? So it's like... To me it's like eating popcorn, just like pop pieces. Yeah, it's, it's like eating self-striping socks, right? You <laughs> yeah. just knit this little piece. Oh, it can hurry and cast on the next piece, right? Yeah. So I think I showed this last time because I hadn't quite finished seaming it and putting the trim on. But now all of that is done and I think it's just turned out so cute. I definitely plan on knitting this pattern again. Um, this was knit with one of my yarns. This um, was... This was a, it's kind of a, a mistake yarn, but it was from my Jane Eyre colorway or collection and it was the just Jane colorway, but this is the batch that ended up with a little extra purple in it, which looks really, which pretty. I love with the extra purple. And I had a lot of other people who loved it too. So yeah. I ended up kind of selling a batch, a big, or, you know, several skeins with it. Um, but that's what that one is. So it just turned out so sweet. So, so sweet. I love baby knits. <laughs> they are just such a happy, they're a good palette cleanser for one. They're just very satisfying. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I haven't done a whole lot of baby knits. I like knitting baby socks because they're just the tiniest thing ever. I mean, so they're like little <laughs> and they're so adorable and they take no time at all. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, my first finished object is actually a combined effort and it is hanging up behind us so here. So pretty. Now, this was actually a gift. Well, part of it. Part of it on our bunting here, our little dainty crocheted eggs. I know, I feel like I need here. I'll rock to the side. Oh, there you okay. go. Now rock to the other side. Okay. There you go. Now you can see them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, our sweet free friend Marie. Um, she is on Instagram and she just out of the blue sent us these. So and sweet. It, the pattern that she used is Egg Swag by Susan Lohman. And she has made some for herself and really liked them and wanted us to be able to use some. And I was trying to decide how I wanted to display them and we decided that we should display them so that everybody could appreciate yes. it, including you. So And that's, Deborah made them. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And she's so she's such a genius. Cause look, Deborah made this swag and this swag. So at the end we get us each take each one take one, one and a half and hang it somewhere in our house. So, so pretty. Emily has some nice. I love it. <laughs> Marie, we would love to come and sit and knit with you on your front porch. We would love to do I like that the sometime. pictures of, of you yeah. sitting, you know, as you're as you're knitting on your front porch and we get mm -hmm. to see out. It's really fun. Beautiful. We'd love to do that. So that's my my first finished object. You're a clever girl. Oh, thank you are you. such a clever girl because she <laughs> found these adorable things, and then she like has this whole idea. Look what she does with it. <laughs> it's fun. It was a fun project to do. Well, lovely. All right. So my second, I'm gonna grab this finished object is a pair of socks, and I had started these some time ago, and then just kind of lost steam. And then got really excited about them and started knitting them again. And I finished these socks. Um, these, if I can get them on there. And I love how they turned out and they fit me fabulous. I don't know why they fit so great because after the heels are usually okay for me, but not like great, but these fit so well. Hmm. I added, does the two. yarn have a different it's, stretch? It's actually a lovely, plump, gorgeous yarn. And so I'm sure that that's part of it. So um, this ball of self-striping yarn, which was unlabeled when I bought it. And I think it's from Scrumptious Pearl. I got it at Colorful Yarns in Colorado. So I could be wrong about that, but I think that's who it was from. Um, and then the pink is from Pirat and Vola. And I think that's how you say it. I don't know. That's this set of this pair of socks. I just put one on the blocker, but I'm really happy because I tried them on and was wearing them around for just like 
five or ten minutes right after I finished them and then I didn't wear them because I wanted to show them today but now I'm gonna now you can wear them put them on my feet and enjoy them so they were really fun I don't know why I was having such a hard time getting going I was kind of socked out Mm -hmm. But as you'll see from the rest of this podcast, that seems to have been cured. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> why don't you show you the, the next one on, since you have your sock blockers up okay. there? So, the next finished pair is this pair, which I adore so much. These socks, these were the ones that I did for the. Um, Learn to knit socks video series that we were doing. Um, these are knit in my um, Alice in Wonderland colorway called Eat Me, Drink Me. It's, yes. I have one. <laughs> and <laughs> I love them. I knit Here, these we for. Show this up close because it's so pretty to see how that works. Yep. I just adore them and I love this. I love my base, my yarn base. I love the colors. I love it all about it. Anyway, <laughs> these are for my daughter. She tried them on, and I knit that, you know, they're, they're shorter in the foot. Um, but my nine-year-old is now wearing a size seven in women's shoes. Well, she's going to be 10 next week. So my 10-year-old, but still. So she will be tall just she's like. She's going to be tall just like me like and Aria. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So these are for her and she will be thrilled that I can now give them to her and she can wear them. So here's the second sock. Da -da -ding. I actually haven't blocked them. I've kind of gotten out of the habit of blocking socks. Well, we honestly. talked about that in our mm -hmm. video series about blocking versus non-blocking. And I said that, so pretty. honestly, I don't block most of mine anymore yeah. unless they're lace. Like, yes, very different. Like I would, I would block them to give as gifts. I block them if I. Sorry, the little girls are over there waving at us <laughs> through the window, making faces at us. <laughs> I'll block mine, um, like for showing on the podcast. But honestly, when we put them on a sock, it blocker, looks pretty it good. It still works well. Yeah. Um, but if they're a vanilla sock and. I'm not giving them away, then I typically don't block them. They're they're very frequently get bound off, ends woven in on and, two feet. Yeah. Like immediately without <laughs> any transition time in between. And then, you know, when I'm washing socks, I just wash a whole batch of them and then hang them out mm -hmm. on a clothes like also, a drying rack to dry and if I knit them on DPNs, I do block them. Yeah. Because but, there's mm -hmm. always that little kind of but line. These were knit on, necessarily these laddering. were knit on DV, DPNs. Mm -hmm. And there, I, I mean, I guess you can see right well, here. Well, it's see not that laddering. Tiny... It's, well, let's see if you, it's just. Yeah, you can see that line right line. there. And I feel like it smooths it out. It does. does and when I really wash matter? them. really matter. Yeah. Once they're on the feet, you won't see it. But once I wash them the first time, they'll disappear anyway. Yeah. So, but I am in love with these. I'm, uh, 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 <laughs> they are very, very, very pretty. I love them. You need really good pictures of this before she starts wearing them for your samples. Yeah, I know. And that's the other thing is I'm like, oh, samples, I really need to... Who has the time? Well, you're knitting it here. Somebody's going to wear it, but just take pictures so that you have Yeah. Have good pictures of it. Yeah. Because it's so pretty. They are really you always, pretty. You see things in skeins and think, how is that going to yeah. look? What, what does that translate to? And it's just so pretty. I'm thrilled with the way that the yarn knit up that... Even though, I mean, like you, there's not really any um, pooling mm -mm. there. You get that little, almost tiny, like tiny bit of a micro stripe in places with the darker, yeah. but with the speckles, it all evens it out. And, Just you know, I mean, very, depending on what gauge, pretty. hand dyed yarns are always possible that they can, well, any variegated yarn, you change gauge and it changes what it's going to do. But these just turned out delightful yeah thrilled. I really like them thrilled all right I have been knitting on my pinwheel scrappy Yay. pinwheel squares again blocks and I finished I'm trying to remember I think I showed all the other ones I finished this one I really really like I this love one that one a lot that's so cute I like this one a lot um and 
I figured out that at the rate that I'm going. <laughs> Don't do that math. That's not good math. It'll be about five years. That's bad math. <laughs> so I decided that I wanted to do a little bit more on it because I actually really like this and want to use it. Yeah. I want it to be for our motorhome. <gasps> Great so idea. I, if I do just one wedge a day, that works out to being close to one a week. And so I could feasibly use it in this lifetime. <laughs> use this blanket in this lifetime. You reduce it to one year instead of five if you work out. Yeah, that. yeah. So I also <laughs> had picked up my um, fusion blanket again, thinking, well, maybe if I do one, one block of those each day. And I decided I hate doing the crochet. Oh, sad. I don't even think I'm going to do it. <gasps> no. I've done all of that work on there, but I just do not like crocheting around that. Could you finish enough to make it like a table runner or something? Because it's so pretty and it would be really pretty as a table runner. Maybe. If you want to. I mean, I don't you don't have know. to. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, honestly. I just had finally decided that and I was like, all this work. And it comes down to the crochet that I just don't enjoy Aww. doing that. So, anyways. But instead, I will put my energy into the blank this blanket that I really like working on, and I really want to use it because I think it will be really fun to have when we're traveling. I think that would be lovely and delightful to have a cozy hand knit blanket in yes. your cozy yes. motor home as you go on your trips. I'm and so excited because oh. it's so close. It's getting so close. It is. That sounds just so fabulous. Yeah, when you were posting your pictures of Southern Utah, mm -hmm. and that was, you know, that's on our list to do right away. So Jenny's Canyon, I'm telling you, that was one of my favorite things I've oh, ever done. My lovely. favorite places ever. Loved it. Um, okay. What other finished objects do you have? Because I just have one more. Just this one that we can make okay, together. Okay, great. So, wait. So, this one. Oh, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> it's staring right at me. Like, literally. <laughs> see? <laughs> I also finished this hat. I This was the thing that I, I cast. In fact, I had your daughter, Ella, start casting this on yes. <laughs> when we were at our writing conference. And I had gotten all the pieces finished for that seamed baby cardigan. And so I needed to cast something else on. And so I cast this, or, well, she started with it, and then I went from there. This um, sock head hat. And this is knit with... McMullen Fiber Company sock yarn in the electric rainbow colorway and it's just so fun. So this is also going to be for my youngest daughter who loves all the crazy colors. I think it still needs a hot pink furry pom-pom on the top or maybe a turquoise one to complete it. Let's grab a turquoise one. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to test it out. I used the pink one already. That one's not very big. That's cute, but I think it would have to either be darker More turquoise vibrant. or hot pink. Yeah. Or even the white. That's cute. Yeah, the furry. I think I, I have, um, I think, well, the hot pink one I have is too small, I think. But anyway, I finished that. And of course, you know what? It's getting to the point where we're not going to be wearing hats much right now this time of year, but who cares? It'll go in the basket and it'll get worn. Well, most hand knits that you're wearing, you're not going to be wearing during the summer, but you yeah. keep knitting anyways. Oh, I know. I think about a lot of people who don't knit in the summer, and I love knitting in the summer. It's fantastic. I wouldn't want to knit a well, blanket because there's not really the pressure to hurry and finish it to use it right now. It's Actually, that's really freeing for me. I can just enjoy knitting it without feeling like there's something it has to be done for. Yes. And so it just goes in the pile. And then it's like you get to cold weather and all of a sudden... You have all these like, new oh, things. Look at all these new things yep, yeah. that have been stockpiled. So anyway, that was super fun. I actually, the first time I've knit the sock head hat. I and love it. I really I enjoyed it. it. Um, but it was a little repetitive for me. So it was really good travel knitting. Yeah. But it wasn't something that like called to me. Oh, I want to work on that, you know. But it was really good for keeping in my purse and taking to the movies and well what I like with it is that it is really good for movies because mm -hmm. you can just keep going and going you don't going have without to having to get to turn. a heel really quickly or get to it you know I know that's the problem with socks is like I'll zoom through that leg or that foot so fast and then be like oh I gotta stop so. yeah when you can't see in the movie yeah. theater or whatever right. so I really enjoy knitting the sock head hat for the mindless knitting times mm -hmm. when you I just like to have my hands busy. I think we're all like that. We want yeah. our hands to be busy, but you can't always sit and focus on something. So that's a really good one. Speaking of that, 
I took knitting to church on Sunday. You did? I did. Now we have three separate sections in our church. We have three our different meetings. Yeah, three different meetings. Our first is called our sacrament meeting. And so it's um, a lot like, I'm trying to think of a comp comparison. It's kind of the most like really sacred part. Yes. And, and I don't knit, I didn't knit during that part. Um, but then we have like classes. And so there's like a, a, a study class and then there's a women's class that I go to. And I knit during both of those. And um, I, that's happening from now on. <laughs> I just have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed being in my classes so much more. Now, sometimes I teach a class and of course I wouldn't take it for when I'm teaching, but um, yeah, that was really awesome. And it helped me to actually talk to a couple of people that I don't know as well because they're kind of quiet and mm -hmm. I don't know, we've just, like we've, we're always friendly, but we've never really connected. And um, one lady in particular, she saw me knitting during the, the middle hour class and she said, during the women's class, she's like, come and sit by me. And she like was whispering in my ear every once in a while, not in a disruptive way, but every once in a while, ask now what are you doing now? Now what's this part? Because I was actually working on a heel of a sock and we just had like, I don't know, we had this really awesome Connection. bonding, connecting moment that I don't think would have happened otherwise. So, and I was very happy. I felt, my, I have a hard time sitting still. And so it was really hard for me to focus sometimes. And I felt so much more focused. Well, I say if so, my hands can be busy, my mind can focus. My mind yeah, will be still. That's how I am too. If my hands have to be still, then my mind goes mm -hmm. crazy and I can't focus. Yep. So. And I shift around yes. and I, yeah. Anxious. And, and then I'm like, are we almost done? Cause I can't pay attention really well so <laughs> and honestly sometimes the comments that people make about some things make me a little annoyed <laughs> or anxious and so I find that I'm like hmm, keep your mouth shut keep your mouth shut when, just knit faster because <laughs> so this one I just yeah I did I just looked down and knit just knit <laughs> bite your tongue <laughs> so anyway I had talked about that or I think it was just on Instagram maybe no it was on our our podcast I'm glad I can't See if I can keep track of it. We had quite a few different comments from people. Yeah. Talking about so, the history of knitting in church. Well, and I totally appreciate that. I just, I personally was trying to not be distracted. And so, but I tried it finally and I was very happy and that's happening. Well, see what it is. I don't want to be distracting to other people. Yes. Because yeah. there are some people that do come and they're. To like break out and spread out their whole project. Well, yes. There is one lady that she does do that and and as she's crocheting she gets her elbow up like this <laughs> like it's a really big it's movement it's a full and body experience the yarn. and you know so when when that's happening and in our uh, congregation things are very mellow and still so that really just draws your attention you know yeah. so I don't want to be drawing someone's attention away from worshiping you know so that's kind of the thing and for me another big piece of it is I knit every day and I try whenever I can um, my own beliefs are I really try to make Sunday which is our Sabbath to be kind of a special and different from other days I just want to mm -hmm. I don't know do whatever I can and it's not like somebody else is putting that pressure on me that's my own um, choice to do yeah that. my own deliberate decision um, and so you know I try and separate it from the rest of the week. Um, but I found that I'm going to be doing that in other ways, like not being on my phone and you mm -hmm. know, things like that because I just need knitting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to, that's going to be the thing for me. doesn't mean it has to be for anybody else, but for me, but that's what you've decided yep. that works well for you. Yep. Exactly. That good. Okay. We both have a finished object that we have actually, we have our own finished objects that we've shared on this channel before um, and it was for a yarn review so we wanted to show them here on our podcast if you haven't watched the yarn review or if you just wanted more information about yes. the projects themselves yes. and not just the yarn exactly so mm -hmm. um, we both bought some um, chic sheet. I have to hold this up so I'm trying to get this ready yeah. so you can see the label this is a new line by Red Heart. It's actually Marley Bird. Um, it's her her line of 100% merino wool mm -hmm. yarns. And so we both knit some baby sweaters to test the yarn out. 
Um, and this is what I was saying. I enjoyed the the baby knit. Mm -hmm. I because it's just to me it's very freeing. There's no squishy. I don't have any babies around yeah. that that it, I was just making whatever I wanted to make. Yes, exactly. Whatever I feel like, I'm going to do it. Oh, I like yeah. this yarn. I like this pattern. I'll just make it. doesn't matter yes. who it's for. Yeah, it's that. that's really fun. So um, the sweater that I knit, it is called Fond of You by Jenny. Okay, Emily. Oh, it was. Weeb? I thought it was Weeby Why? or Weeby. Weeb. Um, but you'll see on here, it has long sleeves. And I was going to knit the long sleeves and I, I picked up stitches underneath the arm to start knitting the sleeves and then decided I actually really like the little cap sleeve because of the shape, the body is a little mm -hmm. bit longer. I thought this looked would be really cute with some so little leggings cute. and like it's a little adorable. kind of tunic almost to length yeah. um, sweater with a little cap sleeve. So I decided not to knit them I want to longer. hug a baby wearing that sweater. Yes, I really like this. So, um, I actually picked up four stitches underneath the arms, and I think it only had you picking up two. I almost always pick up a couple more than what the pattern calls for. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to remember what, what I did differently, mm -hmm. so that if you wanted to do the same thing, you're welcome to do that. But I just picked up two, um, Two extra stitches under the arm. I knit the 12 month size um, because I actually was thinking, I just found out when I cast this on that my sister was expecting. Mm -hmm. She just she just found out. So right. we don't know if she's having a boy or a girl, we but don't. I tried to figure out like when the baby would be, what age they would be, when they would need warmer things. Mm -hmm. And so anyways, I figured out 12 months, if she has a girl, this would be a good size. Oh, okay. So, um, the colors that I used were mimosa was the yellow and my tie was the pink. And I have enough still to knit like a hat and several baby hats. I don't know. I don't, I didn't weigh this, but I still have a good amount left. There were hundred gram skeins of worsted weight yarn. And you can watch the review uh, to get more information about the yarn. About the yarn itself. Yeah, and and uh, what we thought about it. But this is so cute. It is so <laughs> cute. I'm trying to pull up what the oh, colorway is. And I this like, thing. this is a um, double moss stitch pattern. And it just makes it so springy along with the yarn that I feel like a baby could wear this like... <laughs> For a long time. I, the yeah. only part would be the arms here. Like how big do the arms, this side's a little tighter. But And still. how big is their head? And and I made That's sure a nice big that head, yeah. I left this really loose <laughs> because my children <laughs> had the biggest heads, like their percentile, like their height was like 30 percentile range and their weight was like 20 to 10 percentile but their heads were so big they were off the charts <laughs> over 100 and they're like we got to measure all of your family's heads we need every extended family find out if you head. have hydrocephaly so, yeah. yeah and we just i just discovered measuring everybody's heads that everybody has an abnormally large head <laughs> i don't have it well actually mine isn't well I don't know, maybe it On is. all sides of our family. Yeah, we just... On all yeah. sides, we have very large heads. So all of my children, they could never wear turtlenecks or anything <laughs> like that. And I usually had to pop the stitches of, of all of their shirts to get them over their heads or I would cut and insert another snap So you weren't going to have that with that sweater. So I want to make sure that this will fit over anybody's head. <laughs> that is fantastic. So this sweater is the In Threes Baby Cardigan, which I have talked about several times and knit a bajillion times. It's one where I have it memorized now. Every once in a while I have to look at it and remember what the count is for an area, the, the row where you're starting the sleeves. But um, I just, it's adorable. And this even has buttons. If it wasn't Good for the job. fact that we were going to do the review, it probably wouldn't <laughs> have because I never sew buttons on. I just figure, knit it, block it, weave it in, put it aside, sew the buttons on when you're going to give it away. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out darling. This yarn, or the colorway of this one is Sangria. And it's just such a lovely saturated Sorry, magenta. <laughs> You're stringing. I'm I said my hair is. I just was looking up like, what is? <laughs> Your up hair with is hair? long. If 
it's getting long. really long. But it looks like greasy in the no, video. No, it doesn't. It doesn't either. It <laughs> Sorry, looks people. I interrupted your beautiful baby. My sweater doesn't look greasy. <laughs> no, or it's stringy. beautiful. <laughs> your hair does not look greasy or stringy. It looks beautiful. <laughs> So anyway, it turned out, darling, I so recommend this pattern in threes baby cardigan. Um, it is the pattern I learned to knit on and I have taught several people to knit with this pattern because I just think it's, it's a great place to start anyway. So if you're interested, it uses one needle size for the entire thing. There is no seaming. There is no just picking up yarn. stitches. <laughs> there, yeah, I had, what did I say? Like a, a, a gram. Yarn. Or something left of the yarn so and I did shorten the body just a tiny bit in order to to get it all in that skein um, so but it did turn out it turned out really lovely and like Deborah said if you want more information about what our views were on chic sheep or what you know what more about that and how to find it you can watch that review we'll link that in the notes the show notes Hey, that is all my finished objects. I am so close to another finished object, Yay, but you are very, very close. It's so just not I know people are going to ask what shawl I am wearing. This is the Scrappy Bias shawl by Emily Clausen. This was the second one that I knit, um, mostly with my own hand dyed yarns. And it's beautiful. And I wanted to look. I've worn it a lot. Too. It's an asymmetrical shawl. Um, triangular shawl mm -hmm. and so because of that one end ends up really long and I yeah like to just tuck it back underneath it looks lovely like, like that. that I usually just wear mine off centered because that's what and I always I get do tail. I like it <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm wearing all right we have some works in progress yes I wanted to look oh. something up with a scrappy bias shawl really quick if you okay I'm gonna show I'm gonna show something else while you're doing that okay because this isn't knitting but no since I've been in bed a lot I've been doing I did a lot of other stuff too I started um, some, embroidering some hand towels for our motorhome and I did so show this one already I finished this one last week so I have Bluebird and Goldfinch and the pattern is actually one that was my grandmother Gray's that I inherited from her. It's a Vogart pattern and then I started the third one. I'm not doing all seven. This one is a cardinal. So I'm almost done with the three I was going to embroider. They are so. lovely, lovely. Yeah, that is going to be like the most posh, not even <laughs> posh, but adorable. I want it to just feel like home, cozy, Homey. so that when you get in there, you don't feel like you're roughing it. Roughing it. <laughs> I want yeah. it to be really cozy. Okay, awesome. so what were you looking up about the scrapbook? Oh, I shelf? just wanted to say how awesome everybody is because. The Scrappy Bias Shawl has been downloaded almost 18,000 times now, which just boggles my mind. I just yeah. was looking at the numbers because it's like this close to 18,000, so I wanted to see if it had hit it, but it's just, um, it's it just boggles my mind. It's a fantastic project. It's I just am so thrilled because that's just so crazy that some simple thing that I put together is very, very simple. And I'm sure other people have had the idea, but I just put it together on yeah. the paper. Um, anyway, well, but it it's gone that far and you know, there's anyway, that's just really, really cool. Yeah. So you should pull that out. Yes. So here is, and I haven't worked on it for the last little bit. Um, we're actually working on another one between the two of us for a gift and is where we have gotten to. Here, should we? There we go. So you can kind of see the colors we're doing. These are beautiful, like a kind of bright but rich colors yeah. is what we're going for. So a lot of these were ones from my Christmas Advent mini swap. Mm -hmm. So that's really fun that I get to use those in a special project. Well, and the ones that I've been putting in, like this uh -huh. pink stripe is from my Fancy Cardi by Hoagie yeah. Locatelli. And these pink. are from a pair of my socks, like leftovers from yeah. a pair of socks I knit. This is 
yarn from Dragon Horde Yarns. Um, oh, is this the This one's day? from Yarn Cafe. Yeah, this one is Molly Weasley. Oh, right okay, here. that's right. This yarn is a Yarn Cafe Creations yarn. This is a Baron Vola. This is that stripey one from the socks I showed earlier. Oh, okay. The Scrumptious Pearl. You know, so hopefully... You know, we're trying to knit a little bit of ourselves into it. <laughs> so it's been fun. But what's been really fun is we've been having other people knit on it too. So it's, we'll talk more about that later when we finish the project. But that is a really fun one. It's a nice one to be, it's fairly mindless. You have to pay attention at the beginning of the first row and at the beginning and end of the second, the second row and the repeat and everything else is just knitting, knitting, knitting. All right, let's put some of these things away so that we can get to the next. Okay. All right, in project bag that I made with fabrics from Amy for Little Tailor Us, that we did a swap, and I love this jingle bell. <laughs> it probably irritates other people, but when I hear it, to me, this is a happy tingling, ting, tinkling sound. What would the word be for that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so um, this was my Christmas Eve cast on. <laughs> it's been a while, I know. But I took a very long knitting break after Christmas. And I've taken like, I actually took the last week off of knitting as well. And so I haven't had a lot of progress like I would expect to but I did finish this sock. I finished this sock for the um, Learn to Knit Socks mm -hmm. like video series because I was showing how to join in a new color if you nice. wanted to change, yeah. change colors. Um, so I finished this sock. The pattern has a little kind of cable down the back of the That's leg. That's so fun. And the pattern is called Skedaddle by Lena Gerald. There. And I didn't follow the pattern exactly. I just used it for the back of the leg. And the cuff, I used the Candy Floss Socks pattern by Emily because that's one of my favorite uh, cuffs. And um, uh, Gaina on Cuckoo Bee. She's Tales from Cuckoo Land. Yeah, on, yeah. I, on Instagram. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Cuckoo B. I don't know if that's how you say it, Gaina, but that's how, what I say. Um, anyway, she she just showed a pair on her podcast yesterday that she used this cuff. And then I did a um, Eye of Partridge heel, and I just did a traditional wedge toe, but I added in the contrast color earlier so that I could have a have more of this color. I finished that sock. I've got the leg done and so now I'm ready to do the heel on the second sock. So so tell us about the yarn. Oh yeah, the yarn. Sorry Amy. <laughs> this was um, also a gift from Amy from Little Taylor S. Um, this yarn is all the Christmas candy and it has this silver Stellina which you cannot see in this video. Oh it doesn't look as pretty in the video um, in the camera. And then there was this red that has a Stelina, silver Stellina as well. It's kind of more of a berry. Mm, I don't know. It's like a cherry yeah, red. It's so not like pretty. a yeah, yeah, not so a crimson. Pretty. And then this mint. Uh, I have just enough for the toe for the second sock. So, so fun. I love this yarn, and my youngest daughter has already claimed the the um, left overs the rest of it for me to knit her some shorties <laughs> so I know that I'll have to cast those on <laughs> so fun all right okay I'm gonna show my work in progress I'm gonna pull this loop long so I don't have to keep the needle in it I am literally binding this off right as we speak well I was <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put away the jingle leaf. I am being a test knitter for Deborah's gorgeous pattern, Love Entwined Cowl, which I didn't bring a printed, my printed pattern. Okay, it's Deborah, so you have to know anything she makes is stunningly oh, gorgeous. You. You're so nice. And her pattern, like the actual pattern itself, is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. 
I've never seen another pattern like that. That is just beautiful. Thank you. Anyway, I'm binding it off right now. It's this gorgeous cabled um, pattern and they look like little entwined hearts as they go up through the cables. And um, like I said, I'm just at the bind off. So I've still got my needle in the back. And um, I love it because it's kind of a A-line shaped cowl. And I know you've worn it but mm -hmm. before on the podcast. I am excited to be able to wear this before it gets too warm because it kind of drapes lovely in a lovely fashion. And so I'm so excited. And you're releasing this soon. I think you're going to talk about yeah, that later, I'll, aren't I'll you? Yeah, I'll share that at the end. Um, I'm knitting this in my Jane Austen colorway. And... Um, just so fun it's got these little little flecks of slightly darker color through it which I just love but it's so vibrant I like that I like that color a lot and that will be perfect because that's another neutral that will match pretty much everything yeah here. it's a neutral right <laughs> and I the fun thing is is that not only am I knitting Deborah's pattern with this beautiful yarn but I'm keeping it in this project bag <laughs> which they match <laughs> And I was one of the lucky ones to get one of Deborah's March bags, and I just adore it. So I sent out the last of those yesterday, and then I closed my shop. So That's a deep breath. So whoever gets those last bags, enjoy. I hope you. I hope you like them because I love them. I love. They the are. Bags. They're so beautiful. And this was one of my favorite bags it. that I have made. It's got that wool felt, and it's just perfectly perfectly impeccably made as always and it's polka dotted on the inside <laughs> love it so fun so so fun okay. so I'm going to finish. Okay, finish binding off how much do you have left um less than half okay we might see we might see it I know I, I have might. to get the right I have to go to the right area for my Works in progress here. Okay, I still have to move a few more things. I can't handle all the piles to see what in the world I'm doing here. So if I keep looking down, please forgive me. You know what it's like when you're this close to the end. You're just like, I have to keep going. I was going to stay up late and finish it, but that didn't happen. So, All right. So I also finished one sock and I'm working on the next sock. This sock I is the one one of them that I used for the my first socks or learn to knit socks um, video series for the my first socks cow, cow. okay um, this was a sock that my middle daughter she is 14 years old she started knitting and she got this yarn this is a dragon horde yarn it's Captain Jack Sparrow yarn and this mini came with it. So she started knitting this sock and then decided that she really isn't a huge fan of knitting. She likes it for a couple minutes and then she's done, but it's really hard for her to finish a project when you only knit for a couple of minutes every month. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted my bags, I wanted my needles, I wanted all the stuff and I wanted them <laughs> to have their finished pro objects. So I mentioned before that I'm trying to finish all, everybody's things so I can have all my tools back yes. <laughs> so I picked up this um, sock and then finished knitting this um, for our video I was started another sock for the video but just like Emily was talking about for her afterthought heel socks that sometimes just depending on the springiness of the yarn how plump it is you know it's gonna mm -hmm. fit a little bit differently yeah and the one that I had started knitting um, it matched the gauge really well, but it was far more springy. So I actually wanted to go down um, a couple of stitches. So I pulled that out. So I needed another sock because I had already got down to the heel and I think I did the heel turn. I don't remember, but I didn't have enough time to knit all of that for the next video. So I pulled that out, picked this one up, and then I picked up another one. I used all sorts of socks for that video. And the yarn is just... That's Such a lovely fun. yarn. I really love, I love this colorway. I love how it up too. Yeah, it looks really, just really nice. My daughter's really excited for me to finish these. That's so fun. Um, so I, I did 64 stitches. That's what my daughter cast on. Um, 
So she likes 64 stitches, though she has a really, really narrow ankle and foot, but that's what she likes for her socks. So that's what I'm doing for hers. But I switched over to DPNs on these. I went and bought some Knit Picks, no, yes, Knit Picks Rainbow um, DPNs to try. Because wood ones that I've tried, they're not pointy enough or you either get slivers or they break. I just haven't had great success with wood DPNs for socks. Yeah, just because they're so tiny. Yeah, and I thought, well, these were on clearance. I'm gonna give these a shot. I was, I was reading the reviews. And the reason I wanted to do, I really wanted to try wood is because when I'm knitting, my needle pushes right mm -hmm. here again and again and again, and it just will ache right there. And I thought, you know, wood is gonna be a little bit softer and it might not ache so much. And actually that's helped a lot. It hasn't bothered my hand as much. I've wanted to try the square needles because I understand that that's supposed to help as well. But, um, but these are really bendy, but still flexible. They're just not very sharp. So if I wanted to do um, like knit two together and and, or pick up stitches or things mm -hmm. like that. I don't think I would enjoy that quite as much. They are very grippy, um, but I'm mm. kind of liking the naturalness of the wood, and I just have been knitting these at bedtime. So it's just been kind of relaxing. I don't worry about yeah. trying to speed through it. I just knit really slow on these with the wood needles, but I've liked them quite a bit. I we'll see how they hold up because I'm really worried that they're gonna break because they are so bendy. But mm. the difference between these and bamboo is the bamboo will bend and stay bent. These haven't, they, they just spring flex. Back. They're, yeah, they're very springy, so. Well, and bamboo usually aren't polished or like finished. Mm -hmm. And so they are so grippy. And for me, I don't like those. I don't know how yeah. you are, but. I knit that um, Alpha B cardigan, the little baby one, the seamed one, mm -hmm. on wooden needles too, and actually really enjoyed it. But here's one thing that's funny about wooden needles. I don't realize how much, I stick my needles in my mouth. Oh. Like, especially with a DPN, like I'll uh -huh. stick it between my teeth while I do something and then pull it back okay. out. I didn't even notice that I did so that. So when you do that with wood when you put those wood in, you're like, ugh, varnish, ugh. <laughs> it's like not a good thing. Not, not as a pleasant of an experience <laughs> no. for you. No, it isn't. Okay. What do you have in that bag? In this bag, I have what's in my bag. I have a pair of socks that I'm working on for my mother. Hopefully they're. Um, these are going to be oh, really short excited. little socks. Um, I'm going to be doing an afterthought heel, but I'm knitting these with a gradient set that I got from, I think it was called 100 Ravens. And so I just did like the cream, then the palest of the two colors, then the medium of the two colors, and then the most saturated. And they'll be short, like I said, because I need to measure exactly where I'm going to put the heel in, but you know, probably not a very high cuff. Um, these were going to be a birthday present for my mother, whose birthday was last week. So now they're going to be a Mother's Day present for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just really fun springy colors. The name of this, collect of this set is called Pixie Surfer Madness. I don't know that I would have picked those colors or that name to go together, but that's okay. I love the I love the colors. It's very pretty. Very fun. So I've got the one done. I don't think I've cast, I haven't cast on the second. Well, I've got it to here. I mean, I still need to put the heel in and weave in all the ends and all that, but um, I'm just gonna knit the second main Before sock. Before you do the heels. Yeah, then put the heels in. What color in. are you gonna do the heels out of the cream? Um, I'm not going to have enough of the cream that came with it. I mean, it's just an undyed. Uh -huh. um, this was a set of seven minis in 100 grams. And so actually I found that to be a bit challenging because I don't feel like I have enough of any one color to do. I don't have enough of any one color to do heels, toes, and cuffs. You do one of your and undyed? So I can do one of my, you know, just some of my own undyed. It's just a different base. Uh -huh. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. We'll see, I'm actually going to knit the other one and then see what I have left over and go make a that. decision. Um, I knit these this this while we were 
driving for our trip. One of the great things about traveling with my husband is he always drives. He doesn't ever want a break from driving. It doesn't matter how long it is. Last year we drove in one day from Salt Lake City to Omaha, Nebraska, which was a 19 hour oh drive. God. He drove the entire time. Oh. I knit like an entire, I think almost an entire pair of socks on the way there and an entire baby sweater plus something else on the way home. <laughs> Because just he just it. drives and I just knit and it's great. <laughs> so anyway, that was a long drive day. But anyway, so there's that. And also in my bag, I'm being... I found, I, I got these for my birthday at the same time I got that scrumptious pearl ball. And um, I had put it aside and then forgotten about it. And I found it the other day and I pulled it back out. This is from Blissful Knits. And isn't that the funnest, brightest? Ugh, I just love it. That is. So the interesting thing about this is something similar. Not exactly this because I actually want, um, anyway, a slightly different variation. But this is very close to the colorways I want to dye for a fade for a comfort cardi. Oh, okay. A comfort fade cardi. Uh -huh. And so when I found it, I was like, oh, that's so funny because I've been like making all the plans on what to dye. And like I said, these are not the exact same colors, but it's the, the green to purple range is uh -huh. what I'm looking for. Um, and so that was kind of fun, but I found those. Like, maybe I'll have matching socks and cardigan. So yeah, I decided I need, need to knit more scrappy socks after all the complaining I did about the last <laughs> pair I made. And now suddenly I want to do them all. So that's waiting for the next. I wonder what the difference is. Once you start weaving in the ends, will that change your mind? <laughs> no, because I think the big difference for me was that I started on something where the end, the the reverse isn't going to show. I've been weaving in my ends in a different method. Oh, okay. And that changed, and I like how it lays, and it's so much easier to do. And do you do so, it as you go? Um, I'll do. I no, I haven't done any of them on that one pair of scrappy socks. But what it is, is I'm not weaving, oh, I'm not duplicate stitching uh -huh. as far as my weaving. I'm doing them off on an angle that, yeah, on a 45 degree uh -huh. angle um, and then back and, and back. And it's just so much easier to pick up the stitches than trying to duplicate stitch and get it to lay on the, on the exact back and not roll to the front mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and I find that I'm making the, the place where your, um, your yarn is changing that spot seems to be closing up more tidily than I was doing oh, before okay. and different things. So, and I really like right. weaving in ends and I like doing the duplicate stitch, but when you have a million to do after a time, you're yeah, like, okay, not well, favorite. it's not as fun now, but <laughs> yep. okay. I started, I showed it last time what I had started a cowl. Well, I don't know if we'll call it a cowl, a shawl, it's yeah, it's like a cowl. It's like an infinity, infinity scarf almost, right? Almost, yeah. Um, by It's called um, Petals and Picots. It's a Swift Yarns pattern by Carolyn McKenna. That's and fun. it's looped around twice, and there's three lengths. And I think this one, I'm trying to remember, I think this one was the medium length. That's a good length. And... I found yarn that looked almost identical to this and it was by Hula Hut yarns and I started knitting it and after I got a little ways into it I realized the yarn was a little too plump for it it wouldn't drape quite the way I wanted and I loved the yarn so much that I didn't want to knit something that didn't work perfectly so I pulled it out so I could use that yarn for something else and then I Pulled out another project. I had started some socks because I decided that this would actually work better. This yarn would work better. This is a yarn that was dyed custom for me by my friend Crystal at um, Vintage Fairy LLC. And it has. It goes a very well with us today. Look at yes. us. <laughs> We're slightly more corally, but. I, I love pink. She oh, asked yes. me, what colors do you like? And I said, the more vibrant, the better. I like pinks and corals and teals. And this is what came and It's just so pretty. Beautiful. So I was knitting some socks with it. And I just thought it, it would look so much prettier in this shawl. So, so this wrap, it's beaded. Deborah, that is just gorgeous. And 
Those picos along the edge. Yeah, it oh. has trying to hold it because it's I all. Know. Here, sorry. Let's, let me grab it. See if we can get so you can see oh, the, the that's picos gonna be along so here. So pretty. I'm trying to remember. I had counted something like I did. I've done like 230 beads in here so far. <laughs> So, this is gonna have a gorgeous weight. It's really yeah. It just drape. drapes so nice, and that's what I really wanted. I added one more repeat on the end, like I don't know if it was six or eight stitches, something like that, because I wanted it slightly wider mm -hmm. than what it was knitting up when I started on the first time I was knitting this. Um, and the beads I am using are ones that I found at Michaels, and this is the brand. Toho. I got three different colors of beads, kind of this rose gold, a pink, and a pale, like, sea blue color. Are you using all the... And I'm using oh, all yeah. of them. I just uh -huh. mixed them all up and then put okay. them back in the little containers and then I dump them in. When I start knitting, I have a little bowl here that I dump them into and I just, I don't even look, I just grab one and put it on so it's just really random. Right. Uh, um, but I think I'm going to need to get some more beads. I got as many as it said. I thought I got more than that, but then I added some to the side, and I don't know. You added that extra repeat. Yeah, but I just want to knit pretty much until I run out of yarn, I think. But That's a great idea. Well, I don't know, maybe, because I weighed this. I've only used 25 grams so far. What, you weighed this or you weighed this? I weighed this. Oh, okay. And I have 75 grams left of this. Uh -huh. And according to this, I, I've done, oh no, I forgot something like 18 pattern repeats and I need a total of let me see what it was 46 and so I don't think that I would use all of it we'll just see when I get there if mm -hmm. I feel like I need to do more or not it uses a provisional cast on that I did with a crochet hook um, so that I can go and join it in the round later on that's going to be absolutely gorgeous. There's so. something very luxe about a beaded knitted item, isn't yes. there? Yes. It's very. Yes. This one know. was. This one's Extra probably special. one of the more intricate things that I've done, and it takes a long time because every third row I need to do a bead every few stitches, and and that mm -hmm. takes a little while. But it's not hard to add no, beads. It it's not it. hard at all. And actually, I was thinking I might just do a short little video of how. Mm -hmm. um, I do are, you just, are you using a crochet hook? Yes, I use a little. Mm -hmm. I use my grandmother's um, from the set, you know, from the ones mm -hmm. that we inherited from her. And it is a US size 11 crochet hook. I mean, it's the tiniest little yeah. thing so that it fits through the eye of the bead and pulls the yarn through. And I also have my back scratcher in here, which I use constantly. <laughs> constantly. <laughs> I'm always so happy to have this in my bag. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Okay, let's see. I have only one more. Yes. I'll have to show this bag that it's in. My daughter yes, made this bag. Look how cute that one is. And this pin was from um, my friend Mabel Knits. Mabel. No, wait, wait, wait. What happened with my brain? You, me, and Mabel. You, me, and Mabel. That's right. Anyways, on Instagram. Okay, so my project is in this bag, oh, which I still adore. From, what's her name? It's Southern Sparrow. Yeah, Tiffany. Tiffany at Southern Sparrow. Oh, thank you, the unicorns. <laughs> Love this bag. Love it. The only thing I wish I had was a wrist strap. Not because I would carry it on my wrist, but just it helps me to keep hold of things sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, I enjoyed so much knitting my one pair of socks that I showed before that I decided to cast on another pair with one of my Alice in Wonderland colorways. So I'm knitting this one, and this colorway is called Cheshire's Grin. Oh my goodness, that is perfect. It's not so fun. It is perfect. Love this. You color. can tell exactly if you say it's Alice in Wonderland and you look at the yarn. You're like, I oh, know, that like, must be something to do with the Cheshire Cat. Yeah. Yep. So these, this is where I am on it. Um, and this is the one I was knitting in church. <laughs> so not like I took some, you know, nice little subtle colors to church. But anyway, 
doesn't matter. I did a weird <laughs> thing though. I've got, I'm not pleased with this. I'm hoping it's gonna block better. But I did slip stitches along my heel flap and then when I picked up the stitches, I think I picked them up in the wrong spot so it's still showing my slip stitches. Oh, you can okay. see the one edge. I don't know what I did because it, I don't know what I did. I honestly don't. But it looks not neat and tidy. As these are just going to be for me, I probably won't go back and redo it because it's nice and sturdy. So it's not like it's affecting the um, quality of the, the quality. It's just not as tidy as I usually like it. So anyway, but that's where I am on the foot. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. See it's the yarn in the fun. cake. So it's kind of, this cake is kind of smushy weird, but there it is. It's blowing out because it's so fluorescent. So what you're seeing is like, it's, I can actually see it blowing out the color. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, it's so really fun. fun. I love your Alice in Wonderland. Wait, Alice in, in Wonder Wonderland colorways. I do too. <gasps> I See, look say. at these. I I have the rest of that one ball in here because I just think that something has to happen. These have to be married some way. <laughs> Don't they? <gasps> they are fun. They do. <laughs> I might actually put like a deep toe, like maybe in the neck, like in two rows from now. I don't oh, that know, would be fun. Just to put it in there. I just think it's really fun. What else do I have in here? Oh, there was something I wanted to show that was in here. Where did? There it is. It actually, I broke it. It's my fault. I have to fix it. I didn't break it. I just, the clasp came off. But I ordered one of these. Let's see if I can show it to you. Teensy little Cadbury cream eggs charms. It's not going to focus really well. From um, Little Bitty Delights. Amanda. Yep. I know you love the Cadbury cream eggs. I do not like them. A lot of them. people don't like them. It's mm -mm. it's just Richard doesn't like them. It's a like texture thing. It's just But um yeah, I just really felt like I needed and I was gonna hold on, there was something in here. Cause look what I have right here. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the Cadbury cream egg got ready to Ew. eat. It was a little sticky. <laughs> Isn't that a cute? I gotta put the class back on it. That was my own fault. Cause her things are beautifully made. But I just thought that was so fun. Oh, I have a teacup that she made that would be cute to knit on <gasps> when I do the Alice in Wonderland You're eating me knitting. Drinking. Because that would be just a perfect pairing. That would be really fun. The last I, thing I'm working fun. on is just one more block for my pinwheel. This looks funny here. I'm not liking this one now. What I've been doing on these is I kind of have a, a color palette that I'm working mm -hmm. with so that it's not too random because I can only handle so much random and so this one is purples and grays and this one is oranges and yellows. This one was kind of a sea glass where I had like a minty or uh, this blue tans and then peachy pink color. I love that one. This one's kind of just these um, jewel tones. This one I did kind of this kind of white and colorful speckly here, and then I did teals, and then kind of these purpley colors. So they all have kind of this color palette going on for each block, so that they hopefully look like separate blocks. When you put them together, it yeah. doesn't look like you know where they join together in the corners and you have four together that it's a different block or it's just you know really mm -hmm. random because that's what I wanted so this one I had I just go through my scraps and see what I have that will weigh enough to do that and I started with this one that I really 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 loved and I wanted to make that work so I had enough to do two so I thought I'd do alternate mm. this and then I had a yellow so then I pulled out the yellow and I thought those could be the opposite so that I'd have kind of this orangey, tannish, reddish, or yellowish, <laughs> whatever yeah. that color is here. And then the other orangey yellow here. And then the green that I had looked good, but I needed one more color. 
and I didn't have enough to do two of any of them except for this one. But I think once it's all done, it'll be it'll good. Be fine. And it's a little 70s, which is kind It does, of and that's not really, I mean, actually, it's not my thing at all, which is why I don't like the brown. Yeah. But once I put it in. It reminds me of our fine. family room from our house that we lived in when we were oh really goodness. little. Oh my goodness. Doesn't it? And the curtains that were hanging up were that were that this. Orangey. This, yeah, they were between, that. Not, uh, it was like this, only marled. It wasn't solid like yeah. that, so it was slightly it was terrible. It was, broken up. It was like the chenille. You know little... what? I bet that for the time, it was, it was probably just gorgeous because our mom yeah. has beautiful taste. Yes. And she wouldn't just do something no, but, horribly tacky. But, you know, I, I never was drawn to those colors. What I really wanted was a red, kind of orangey red to put yeah. with it, but I didn't have enough for that. So. Anyways, that's what I've that's got. That's super fun. Okay, here's the thing, you guys. I am three stitches away. <gasps> three. Okay, let's let's, Two. let's count down with her on her finishing this project, and then she can and and of course she won't edit look and put it back in the fin in the finished. <laughs> <laughs> and there it has to be we, blocked though. It does, and I have to like weave, weave in the, the ends because you know when you bind something off in the round, you got to do that last little stitch to kind of close that. Oh, I didn't say this pattern, the pinwheel. This is my scrappy pinwheel blanket. <clears throat> the pattern is by Mina Phillip from Knitting Expat. Now this is not blocked, so it's not going to lay the so it's exactly be right. Tight, but oh, it's going to be great. Once it's blocked, <laughs> yeah, it definitely and everything. needs to be blocked. <laughs> right now, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's going to be so great. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait to block it. Look. Yay! You did it! Good job! I'll still show it in finished objects next time. Because get some pictures. I need to actually, you know, finish the finished <laughs> object. So fun! So speaking Yay. of that... Um, I have, okay, go ahead. I, oh, was okay. say, I have a couple little things I wanted to show, and okay, then you want to end with that? Okay, so really quick, just a couple little things. First of all, I managed to get one of Jewel's It's So Sweet Violets. Here's her little card. One of her bumblebee pins and I had to show it because it is so adorable. Come on out. Come on fella. Look at that. Well, I don't know what you can glitter. see. The wings are glittery. Oh my gosh. It just came a couple days ago and so I haven't put it on my bag. I'm going to do that right now but it's just the most darling little thing. It's very cute. So I thought that was just so fun. She sent me a cute little <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that was really fun. So that was one thing I wanted to show. The other thing I wanted to show was a new to me sock or yarn sock dyer. Yes, eventually. Yarn dyer. Um, this company is called the Candy Skein Yummy Series. This was her January colorway, Candy Skein. And it's called Polar Pop. And it's just a really fun... Look at that. Those speckles are just gorgeous. So, Ooh, look isn't at that color? Oh, with that. Well, there you go. I like that combination. That's super there. fun. Yeah, because look, you've got like right there. Like, doesn't catch some it little, as well. Yeah, that would be really fun. So, I picked these up at the Knitting Post, which is a store that's only been open for about a year, and that's that one down in St. George I was talking about earlier. Um, but I just thought that was so fun. I love seeing local yarn stores that are carrying indie dyers. Well done. Mm -hmm. All of you yarn store owners, you guys are awesome. So I had to show that. And then this is the last thing I had to show. I just need to sew and I <laughs> never have, I haven't had much time for it lately, but I saw this bundle of vintage. These are from reclaimed fabrics from vintage sheets. And I had to grab it. It's fat, fat quarters. Oh my goodness. My from stomach. vintage sheets. If you can hear the rumbling, I'm sorry. Oh, she's starving. Oh, that yellow. Checked. I know. Look at that oh, on I the back. I love that. I love that yellow. There's only one in here that's not, that I don't, I feel like doesn't go with the rest, which is this one right here. It's a cute fabric, but it's kind of, um, I don't know, more of antique colors. And the rest are very fresh, clean kind of. Mm hmm colors but it just came in the cutest little bundle this is from the little shabby shack and i just love her shop and so i wanted to share that with you but i've got to make something 
I've got to make a baby quilt or something out oh, of those. Goodness, that Wouldn't would that be, be so just cute. the sweetest thing? Yeah, if Alexis has a girl. Oh, look at that green right there. Oh, I love that. Isn't that just fun? And I love this navy. Then this one. I think that we might have actually had these sheets when Let we were see. kids. I don't know. That looks really familiar to I me. I see a lot of the sheets that people are that sewing one. from, and they oh, were the ones that were on our bed. so love those. <laughs> So I'm really excited Love to do something. that check is so cute. I that, just, or that gingham. The whole bundle is just, right now it's just sitting on the table. Because it's home decor, um, right? And I, I just pet. keep looking. <laughs> just, We've talked about that, how we have to yes. pet our yarn and pet the fabric. Oh, love it. And I like to fan out the fat quarters. And then I'll I'll have them like in my sewing room. Yeah. And I put them out and on my cutting kind of, table. And then you rearrange them. And if I'm them. frustrated or whatever, I just come out and I just... <sighs> Close my eyes and sigh. I'll pet them. Don't you I'll... just do that though? Like yeah. where you kind of like shuffle, shuffle yep. the fabrics. Oh, look at these two. Oh, look at these yes, three together. Yes. Oh, it's just like with yarn. Just you dreaming do about thing. what it could be. Yes. Mm. Yarn. I hold up against my face and I smell it. And I. Oh, oh speaking, speaking of... of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, smell this yarn. <laughs> smell this from, yarn from Crystal. Well, what I was doing was I was kind of. You can't smell as much. I was doing a steam blocking or kind it of. It smells like your house. Okay, smell this. Smell this one. <laughs> Does my house smell okay? No, good. Like, it okay, I'm like I don't know if that's good or it bad. It smells like going to Deborah's house. Um, okay. I was this. trying to steam block this so that it yes. opened up so I could kind of see the pattern and show it a little bit more. And when I was doing that, I was like, oh, it smells so good. Whatever you wash this with crystal. Oh, I love it. Okay, smell okay, this let's one. Smell this one. <laughs> Sorry, you can't smell this. <laughs> oh, that's fresh. <laughs> Smell it. We need smell a vision. <laughs> I'll wave it, and eventually it's going the to smell walk towards you. Of this fresh, lovely yarn. <laughs> mm. I know, because as I was knitting it yesterday, last night, I was doing the same thing where I'm like, oh, it smells so lovely. <laughs> Most it. of the time, everything around me just smells like wet yarn because yeah. I do so much of that. But like, especially if I have a bunch of yarn, like tons of yarn hanging to dry, I'm so excited for it to be good outside so I can hang it outside. But in my house, I'll come home and I'll open the door and I'm like, yeah, it smells like what yarn is. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. anyway, but that's okay. Okay, I'm at so the end fun. of this wedge. So I finished this wedge. That was a lot of stuff. We have, I know, we had a lot. But it's been a month. I know. Well, four, I mean, four weeks in this case, that's yeah. a month. Um. We kept, we had plans to podcast two different times, but illness work. and schedules just never yep. came together, which is okay. That's, that's fine because this is meant to be a creative outlet and fun. And if it becomes a job, we won't love it. No. It then just, we won't be as funny because we're really fun. Well, I, we laugh a lot when we're together. We think we're funny. But my kids, they're like, why are you mm, laughing? Okay, mom. All right. <laughs> Okay, yeah, after last night we were talking about the movie Coco and my Which kids love the seen. part. I have it. Where I little boy is like, I used to run like this, but now I run like this because it's faster. <laughs> my husband said my daughter says, I feel like that that's really just eight to ten year old boys in general. That they go like at that age, all of a sudden everybody has to run like this. And she said all of the boys when she was growing up that that's what they would do, thinking that they were so much faster. And my husband said, Well, not only did I do that. But I did it with roller skates. <laughs> I wanted to reenact this. I went to on roller skates and ran really fast. <laughs> can you picture him doing that? Yes, I can, actually. I can picture him when he was little doing that. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. I know. Sometimes, Sorry. you know, you just got to <laughs> laugh. It's the best. Uh, it's just such, such a rejuvenating yeah. thing to laugh. <laughs> I just keep petting this. How do you so run? Pretty. That's the question. I How don't. Do run? <laughs> I run in my dreams. I started running, I run but I always murders. wonder, how is my... <laughs> I only run for murderers. <laughs> I had to run after my dog. She ran off and because we've been stuck in the house for so much. And I thought, I'm going to take her out for a walk on this one clear day where I feel good enough to do that. And she just ripped her leash out of my hand and took off and we live on a busy street and I was just like I am too sick to chase after you here and I was so upset but if I could do this with roller skates I could have caught up with her really fast anyways no. <laughs> we got her just fine okay we have um, a, another giveaway we announced 
when we were doing our yarn review that we were going to do a giveaway for the Red Heart um, Chic Sheep yarn. So we have this skein. This skein is Creme de Mint. Mm -hmm. And it is, I believe it's 100. Yeah, it's 100 uh, grams. Where is the impression? 100 grams, 198 yards. 186 yards. 186. Okay. 170 meters. And it's 100% merino wool. Washable. It's, it is mercerized, not super wash. So that is what makes it washable. And we talked about that, um, our experimentation with washing it. So we have that and a couple of little little knickknack things to go in with it that we purchased. We purchased this at the the expo we went to. Stitches West. Stitches West. Okay. So we are going to give that away. Um, we will be announcing the winner in our next episode. So <laughs> I really want to give, I really want for people to have to post how they run <laughs> for this. Okay. But that wouldn't be very nice. <laughs> I want to know. No. Okay. No, no, we no, should no. probably say, um, what's your favorite one skein project you've ever made? Or what's a one skein project that you that, that you have your eyes on if you haven't done, done one yet? How's that sound? Sounds good. Because I'd love to hear those too. And we're going to have you comment that in our Ravelry thread this mm -hmm. time. Um, sometimes we do the comments below, but we'll have you do that in our Ravelry thread. So if you will go there, there will be a what is your favorite one skein mm -hmm. project. Um, and we'll announce that next episode. Yep, we'll have Excellent. that. Okay, here you have to write that down there. I'm okay, question I will. Here and yeah. after. So uh, the Love and Twined Cowl, I wore that in our last episode and I had some pictures on Instagram of me wearing that and Emily showed it here. We have several different test knitters that are doing a fantastic job with it. I am just they are so so thankful for all of the lovely people who are test knitting for me and have been so gracious about it and very helpful with my first experience with pattern writing I don't know what I was thinking getting into that but it's, it's not gonna be your last experience <laughs> you're so good at it but that will actually release on April 8th in Ravelry, I have to figure out, how, Emily, I need your help in figuring out how to make that work. <laughs> I will help you. So, um, you can watch for that to release and it's called, I think I already said that, it's called Love Entwined. So, if you watch on Instagram, I will post that as well so that you will be able to have a link to it uh, to find it and know when that's released. So, just watch on Instagram and I am Indigo Chicken Dolls on Instagram. I think that that is probably everything. This is an exciting, fun yeah. time to see all of our projects. Um, yeah. Okay. And we have a fun thing coming up too, because you and yeah, I. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we get to go to our retreat that we do in the spring. It's a retreat for couples with a lot, of, several of our friends that mm -hmm. we started doing. It's one of our. Is this the fifth year? This is five or six. I think this is five. I think this is five. Yeah, I think you're right. It is so. Fun, so fun. So I've been like thinking ahead to what projects I'm gonna take. I actually have not been doing as much knitting. Yeah. Or I want to be doing some more sewing. I have more sewing that I'm going to be doing. So I've been taking it easy on the knitting yeah. side of things. So. I have a shawl I want to design that's a three color shawl and so maybe I'll take that. But that, that might, well I think that might work actually. That might be a good setting because it's, I don't think it's gonna be a super complicated one to knit. But anyway, it's exciting. Oh, that, it's, this is such a good time of year. It is. So free. many possibilities. I feel free right now. It's lovely. So, so if you celebrate okay. Easter, have a happy Easter this coming up week. And if not, just enjoy, hopefully, the spring weather. Stay warm if you're in <laughs> getting the snow still. Oh, We're seeing people still getting it. But we just love having you, and it's been great talking to you. All right. See, See you soon. Bye-bye.